Hello everyone, this is Saurian Target coming at you with something a little bit different today. Today I'm going to be covering some concepts I've come up with for what I would consider my perfect carnivores game. See, for the past seven years or so, I've been brainstorming different ideas for what I would want to see in a new carnivores release. Now, certain elements have changed drastically since I began this venture, and others have remained pretty much the same. But recently, I think I've finally finalized my ideas for what I would want to see in a new Carnivores game. And since I've had quite a few of you ask me questions like, what would I change in the Carnivores games? Or, what's my ideal Carnivores game? I thought I would put those ideas into a video for you guys to see. Now, part of the idea for this comes from thinking that Cityscape was the last Carnivores game I would ever get as a kid. And part of it comes from the lackluster and frustratingly disappointing release of Carnivores HD and Reborn. And I should mention that these are only ideas and concepts I have for a hypothetical new release. I have no intention or skill level to actually bring this game to life myself. But if anyone sees any ideas here that they want to use for either a mod or a full-blown brand new dinosaur game, go right ahead. I will not be able to use these ideas for anything tangible myself, so if you see something you like and want to use it, be my guest. And of course, let me know in the comments what you guys want to see in your perfect Carnivores game. I love hearing all the ideas and discussions that take place in the comments, so keep them going. Now, without further ado, let's begin. As far as titles go, I've had this project titled Carnivores Genesis for a long time. Now, for an extremely brief period of about two and a half days, I actually thought I would go ahead and make this game myself. Until I looked into all that entails creating a video game from scratch, and decided that I didn't have the time nor the skill level to make this a reality. During that time, however, I remembered that I did not own the Carnivore's IP, so I would have titled the game something generic, like Dinosaur Planet Safari. But now that I've moved it back to just a hypothetical game, I'll stick with Carnivore's Genesis until something better comes along. In fact, I can use you guys for this. What do you think would be a better subtitle for this hypothetical Carnivore's game? Do you like Carnivore's Genesis, or should something else be used? Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. For the story, I've always aimed at a soft reboot aspect for the game, acknowledging what came before while kind of resetting the established designs, allowing for more creativity with older elements. In the year 2190 AD, the science vessel FMMUV discovers an alien world eerily similar to Earth. On this planet, the team discovers hostile terrain and dangerous reptilian inhabitants that remarkably resemble the dinosaurs of ancient Earth. So naturally, some greedy Earth company buys the planet and turns it into a hunting reserve, and thus the Carnivore's story is born. Carnivore's genesis happens ambiguously sometime after the Crater City incident, as we'll discuss with the dinosaurs later. As with most of the Carnivore's games, Genesis would focus on subtle storytelling through discovering locations on the planet, rather than through cutscenes and monologues. So now that we have the context established, let's jump into the game itself, and first off is the menu. Of course, you'll sign Dino Hunt Corp's waiver stating that when this happens... <laughs> ...it's your fault, and then you can move into your account and the main menu. One thing I should probably mention here before we get too far is that any artwork you see here is mine, but it's not definitive of what I want any of these areas or creatures to necessarily look like. These are just very quick visual representations of the concepts. I would probably need to spend a lot more time on them to truly finalize a definitive style and aesthetic for the game. Now back to the main menu. It's from here that you can choose where you want to go. You can start a hunt, you can play cooperatively, check your score on the leaderboards, check out the trophy room, customize the game through options, check out the name of the person responsible for this idea, or quit back to the desktop. We'll cover most of these options throughout the video, but first let's jump into the hunt menu. The hunt menu will basically act as your main hub. You can check your score, your rank, your current loadout for a hunt, check your daily reward, check on side missions, and of course, select your area, dinosaurs, weapons, and equipment for a hunt. Now, let's just address this right here before we get too far. 
Carnivore's Genesis would redo the current Carnivore's currency system. Now, don't get me wrong, I love this system, and it works for the Carnivore's games, and it's a very forgiving system if you accidentally click on something, but it gets to a point where it's kind of useless. Once you've earned about 9,000 points, score becomes meaningless. And that's fine for when you want to hunt everything with everything, but at that point, what are you working toward? I want to give players a constant sense that they are working toward something. So Genesis would use a permanent buying system. You click on something to buy it, you lose those points, and permanently keep whatever you bought. No refunds, all sales are final. Now, this might seem a little bit harsh, but I think this works better into the scoring hunting system I have set up, as well as the daily reward system. Your daily reward would be in the form of card packs, and before anyone mentions it, this is not the microtransaction system from Jurassic World the game. Carnivore's Genesis would take the Metazoica route with this. Free card pack that you earn through playing the game. You couldn't buy these card packs even if you wanted to. Also, I don't have any packs designed specifically for Genesis because I don't have a style decided yet, so I'm just going to use these hypothetical ones I made for Carnivore's Reborn as a placeholder. Now, with the old currency system, this pack system wouldn't work. For what you would win in these packs includes extra cash, dinosaur licenses, ammunition, weapon skins, actual weapons, side missions, and more, depending on your rank and what you own. If you could just buy and unbuy something in a one-and-done style with no consequence, then there'd be no point to collecting ammunition or dinosaur license. But this way, you keep spending up your resources and then getting them back. You get one free card pack a day just to keep the ball rolling in case you use up all your license or you miss every single shot. So this way, you'll get some more. Plus, the novice rank weapons have unlimited ammunition and they're free. You'll get cash for downing a dinosaur, license or not, and the Trank rifle is a completely separate weapon that you don't buy ammo for. So it's not like you'd ever be stuck and unable to play the game. But we'll touch more on those details later. These packs could also give you side missions, which would include objectives like kill the six stegosaurus before it infects the herd, or tranquilize three ceratosaurs for rabies testing. These side missions would reward you with prizes like extra score or rank tier card packs, depending on the difficulty. I remember the old Cabela's hunting games having little side missions like that, which kept the hunts going longer and made them more immersive, in my opinion. But these card packs and side quests are not the main focus of the game. So now let's jump into the first item you will select, your hunting destination. Now, the goal of the hunting areas in Carnivore's Genesis is not to designate a specific sector. It's instead kind of to showcase all the different areas the planet has to offer. The ranking system will return in Carnivore's Genesis with Novice, Intermediate, Advanced, Expert, and Master ranks making up the lineup. Because cash is dealt with separately from rank, each map's availability will be determined by your rank, meaning each map is technically free. Rank is determined by how much score you have, and at novice rank, each novice rank map is unlocked, which gives players more variety early on and will relieve them of one more currency item to worry about. The first novice rank map is a remake of the classic, or in my case not so classic, Woods of Turan Chocks. As I'm sure some of you are aware, I am not the biggest fan of the Woods of Turan Shocks. It's a little dull compared to many of the other maps in the series, but it does set the tone nicely for the rest of the planet. And since this is a soft reboot, I thought it would be nice to re-include the woods for a slightly updated version, since it was the first map in the first game. The original Woods of Turan Shocks is pretty featureless. In fact, it's featureless enough that slightly revamping it won't hurt or detract from its overall theme. But this map would only be the original main island, not the extended portions available on the Reloaded Tour. This map is your basic starting area, the stocked pond, if you will, before you head out into the depths of the planet. Soft, rolling hills with wooded groves and ponds make up the island. Nothing of real importance or significance here. Just a nice, simple introduction to what you're up against. The next novice rank area would be Trochi Beachhead, a tiny cluster of land heavily inspired by the real-life Bora Bora. This beachhead is mostly comprised of rocky inland terrain with widespread beaches surrounded by shallow water. 
The dinosaurs that live here are unique and suited for life in a tropical area, taking their nutrients from the several oases scattered around the island. The next map would be available at intermediate rank and is called Bezinda Desert, a flat, arid, and harsh stretch of land located close to the planet's Triassic sector. This large desert is located on the coast of one of the planet's actual continents, where rocky mountains and steep cliffs hide in the hazy noonday heat. This open area is good for providing clean sight lines for the hardy animals that live here. The next intermediate rank island available is the Ruins of Vatar, a very broken and jagged island. Named in honor of the lead explorer who vanished into the depths of the island, this area is comprised mostly of deep, dark forests, with many strange ruins of unknown origin scattered throughout the shadowy trees. The next island available at advanced rank is Morbuzad Swamp, a treacherous island comprised of many dark swamps and marshlands. Carnivores abound here, as their lighter frames allow them to easily scavenge herbivores that become stuck in the mud. A mysterious temple lies to the northeast, but no one has dared explore its interior. The next island available at expert rank is Forzin Range. The Forzin Mountain Range is one of the largest and most beautiful on planet FMMUB32. Huge snow-capped mountains line the coast, while lush, tropical jungles make up most of the island. A large desert lies to the northwest, and scattered archipelagos to the southeast, which provide one of the most diverse and treacherous hunting islands available. The next expert rank island is the Forgotten Forest. Formed around the impact crater of an ancient meteor, this island was all but forgotten until recent times. Long abandoned due to inhospitable environments, this island is home to some of the most treacherous terrain and dangerous creatures known in the universe. This would be kind of like the Great Lake with just a little more to it, kind of like what the Great Forest should have been. The final map available would be unlocked at Master Rank, and would be called Ashes of Eden, named after one of my favorite songs by Breaking Benjamin. Located deep in the heart of the dinosaur planet, this section of land went completely unnoticed by Dino Hunt Corp probes until now. Protected by a strange and unknown power that scrambles most electrical systems, this paradise is a haven for many dinosaur species, often bathed in a golden glow, and is a reward for only the best of the best. This island would essentially be a tropical paradise, a mysterious and relatively unexplored place. This area is engulfed by a mysterious, perhaps supernatural power that protects it from scanners and probes, forcing explorations to be held on foot. Two large tree-like organisms guard each side of the island, perhaps tied to the origin of the planet itself. You know, come to think of it, maybe I should switch the names for Ashes of Eden and the Forgotten Forest. Since the Forgotten Forest is actually a place created by fire and destruction, and Ashes of Eden is an actual Forgotten Forest. What do you guys think? Should I switch the names or no? Selecting the time of day you wish to hunt returns, instead of crafting the same map thrice around different times of day. And selecting Observer Mode is now available here. I wanted to make choosing your time of day more involved than just changing the aesthetic of a hunt. So, in Carnivore's Genesis, dinosaurs would be more or less active depending on the time of day. For instance, Chasmosaurus often gets bullied out of competition for food by the much larger Triceratops, an animal active during the day. So, Chasmosaurus would be active at night. Therefore, if you want to hunt a Chasmosaurus, you'll need to hunt either at dusk or at night. Similarly, dinosaurs would be more or less active depending on the weather. Randomly generated fog or thunderstorms could roll through parts of the map. Fog would simply obscure your vision, but thunderstorms would interfere with your radar's GPS signal, essentially blinding you if you're using it. Herbivores would hunker down, but carnivores would become more active, forcing players to choose whether or not to wait out the storm. The next selection menu would be for selecting your dinosaur license. Like the maps, each dinosaur of your rank would be unlocked, but you would still need to purchase the license. So at novice rank, Stegosaurus is unlocked, as it is a novice dinosaur, but you still have to purchase the license to bring one back with you. 
You can, however, hunt one down and collect the cash without a license, but you just can't put it in the trophy room. Carnivores Reborn tried this, but it was still with that no-consequence currency system that ultimately made it feel pointless after about 7,000 gems were collected. Here, once you use up a dinosaur license, it's gone, and you have to buy another one. This way, you get to constantly use your points, and you can't just spam collect every dinosaur you kill. You have to pick and choose your targets. So when you finally use that T-Rex license you've been saving up for, you better make it good and start saving up for another one because you're not achieving Tyrannicide anytime soon. Plus, you can get dinosaur licenses in the card packs, so if you run out, you're guaranteed at least one a day if you wait. The menu displays each dinosaur, its stats, facts about it, the target zones, the rank, the cost, and how many of its licenses you currently have purchased. Again, it should be noted that these are not the definitive designs for each dinosaur that I want. These are just some visual representations that I threw together. The ambient creature lineup includes the classic Gallimimus and Moshops, of course, as the non-threatening beasts, as well as the newly introduced Pelicanomimus. The Dimetrodon would return, I think, as a more rare, potentially hostile ambient creature, attacking hunters if threatened. The Dimorphodon and Pteranodon would return, with the larger Pteranodon ruling the skies and the smaller Dimorphodon gliding about from tree to tree, breathing more life into the between sky and ground section. The huge sauropod Brachiosaurus would return with its iconic amphibious lifestyle, offsetting its enormous weight to cool in the coastal water. To differentiate from the vertical Brachiosaurus, the horizontal Seismosaurus of Carnivore's Legend would debut as a hostile ambient dinosaur, spending its time in the more shallow inland ponds and marshes, as opposed to the Brachiosaurus preference to the coast. The first novice rank dinosaur available to hunt is the Stegosaurus. The iconic Stegosaurus is an effortless target for beginners because it is slow and large. Now since this dinosaur planet seems to be a haven for outdated dinosaurs and dinosaur theories, I thought it might be cool to have the Stegosaurus operate using the second brain in its hip to control its back legs and tail, further emphasizing how unintelligent and base instinctual it is. The next novice rank dinosaur would be the Ankylosaurus, the planet's walking fortress. Extremely slow and unintelligent, this dinosaur would rely on its armor plating to protect itself from attack, and it attacks in turn with its massive club tail if wounded. Because of its armor, you'd have to aim for its soft underbelly for a clean kill. The next novice rank dinosaur is the Parasaurolophus, a duck-billed dinosaur that is easily recognizable thanks to its enormous head crest. The reason I've moved the Parasaurolophus from the traditional first dinosaur slot to the third is because of its evasiveness. What Parasaurolophus lacks in armor, it makes up for in speed and keen senses, which makes it a good challenge for beginning hunters in determining their hunting tactics. The next novice rank dinosaur is the Pachycephalosaurus, a smaller but far more aggressive herbivore with a 10-inch thick skull it will use as a battering ram if disturbed. The Pachy is the hunter's first go at hunting herbivores that will actively fight back. Design-wise, I went for a design inspired by the Pachy from Saurian. I found the studded tail to be an exceptionally neat touch. The next novice rank dinosaur is the Oviraptor from the Central Sector, not the Rinchenia from the Exotic Sector. While the Earth Oviraptor was probably a good parent, the Oviraptor of the dinosaur planet lives up to its name as an egg hunter, stealing from the nest of larger dinosaurs. This has made them somewhat of a pest on the dinosaur planet, and their small size and lack of aggression make them a good beginning carnivore. The next and final novice rank dinosaur is the Allosaurus, a medium-sized carnivore that makes a great beginning challenge for hunting carnivores. Although the Allosaurus of the dinosaur planet is much smaller than its Earth counterpart, it is no less aggressive. This saw-toothed dinosaur has powerful clawed limbs and jaws that can unhinge like a snake making it a fearsome hunter itself. The next dinosaur is of intermediate rank, the medium-sized Chasmosaurus. To help differentiate the Chasmosaurus from the Triceratops, I have decided to make the Chasmosaurus an extremely shy and skittish dinosaur that is usually outcompeted for food by the much larger Triceratops. Because of this, Chasmosaurus is only active at night and has developed bioluminescence, making it a good, elusive transition for the next rank. The next intermediate rank dinosaur is one of the smallest on the planet, Coelophysis. This tiny dinosaur makes up for its minuscule size by traveling in packs. Coelophysis is a very noisy dinosaur. You will probably hear a pack before you see it. 
There is little to no organization in the dinosaurs' pack hunting methods, as they are very violent and will kill their own without question. The next dinosaur available at advanced rank is the legendary Triceratops, one of the most iconic and sought-after dinosaurs on the planet. This elephant-sized herbivore is easily recognizable thanks to its large frill and three sharp horns, weapons it will use against unwary hunters if disturbed. The next advanced rank dinosaur is one of the planet's most dangerous, cunning, and feared dinosaurs, the Velociraptor. These vicious dinosaurs hunt in organized packs, encircling and flanking their prey. You may hear a Coelophysis pack from a mile away, but you'll never hear a Velociraptor pack coming. One thing I want Velociraptors to be able to do in Carnivore's Genesis is jump extremely high, as this would eliminate the standing on a rock invincibility that you can sometimes exploit in the Carnivore's games. The next advanced rank of dinosaur is the Dilophosaurus. Now, I want Carnivore's Genesis to take another spin on the snake-like Dilophosaurus, making it the only dinosaur on the planet that is venomous. But unlike Jurassic Park, the Dilophosaurus doesn't have a frill and it doesn't spit venom at its prey. This Dilophosaurus functions more like a Komodo dragon, inflicting a venomous bite that kills hunters after about 30 seconds. Dilophosaurus would be ambush predators, sneaking up on hunters and biting them before darting off into the bushes, waiting for the venom to take effect. If you act quickly, you can summon a dropship home, or if you wait too long, the venom will take effect, and you'll lose all of your progress from the hunt. The next advanced rank dinosaur is the Spinosaurus, sticking with the smaller variant this time. This Spinosaurus is a quick and powerful hunter, preferring to hunt in thick forests, where its camouflage and size give it an advantage. But this Spinosaurus has been known to become amphibious and hunt in swamps if necessary. The next advanced rank dinosaur is the Dwarf Tyrant, Nanotyrannus. If you saw my Indominus Rex showcase video, then I'm sure you're aware that I am a fan of the idea that the Nanotyrannus on the dinosaur planet is an artificially created dinosaur, DinoHunt Corp's first attempt at genetically modifying dinosaurs. This dinosaur was made using the combined DNA of Tyrannosaurus and Velociraptor designed to generate interest in the hunting division. Soon after, the dinosaur was released into the wilds of the exotic sector, where it thrives as fast and powerful predators. The next advanced rank dinosaur is the Stocky Carnotaurus. With enormous bull-like horns and a ferocious temperament, Carnotaurus is arguably the most aggressive dinosaur on the planet. It is fast and will charge and kill anything it believes it can, so use caution when hunting one. The next and final advanced rank dinosaur is the Ceratosaurus, an enormous ambush predator that uses its torpedo-shaped body to ram, impale, and trample any perceived prey item. This is one of the planet's top predators, so use extreme caution when hunting one. The next dinosaur is available at expert rank and is the largest predatory dinosaur on the planet, the Giganotosaurus. This huge carnivore was hunted to near extinction after the Crater City incident. But now that its numbers are back up, Giganotosaurus is once again available for select hunters. Giganotosaurus functions as a solitary scavenger, preferring to stay on the edges of clearings where it can watch for food undetected. Although it is rather slow and not overly aggressive, it won't pass up human-sized snacks. The next carnivore available at expert rank is the planet's alpha predator, Tyrannosaurus rex. This huge carnivore is the most sought-after dinosaur on the planet and has no trouble locating and devouring prey with its incredible senses and enormous jaws. With incredible armor-like scales adorning its hide, only the most legendary of hunters can bring down a Tyrannosaurus. Design-wise, I can't decide between a more stereotypical 90s design for the T-Rex or one based off of the Rex from the cover art of the original Carnivore's game. I thought the latter might be more fitting given the overall theme of Carnivore's Genesis. But what do you guys think? In fact, hashtag old school Rex or hashtag alien Rex, depending on which one you think should be in the game. Since the introduction of the Yeti in Carnivore's Ice Age, it has become tradition for Carnivore's games to include secret, bonus animals, hidden until they become unlocked. These next three dinosaurs are the bonus animals for Carnivore's Genesis. And the first one is the Trachodon, unlocked at expert rank after killing a T-Rex. Trachodon is an abandoned genus of dinosaur, specifically a hadrosaur, and since the dinosaur planet of the Carnivore series seems to be a haven for outdated dinosaurs, I thought it would be neat to bring the Trachodon back as an elusive expert rank herbivore. 
This social animal spends its time in swamps and dark forests of the dinosaur planet, and with its incredible senses, it will flee at the slightest hint of trouble. The next two dinosaurs are unlocked at the master rank, reserved for only the most experienced hunters. And the first one is Iguanodon, but not the Iguanodon that we know. The Carnivore series already has two canon Iguanodon specimens, so that name is really out of the question. I thought Iguanosaurus might be a better name for it, but since that time, I thought the more recognized Mantelodon, after Gideon Mantel, would be a more proper and distinguished name. This ancient beast would be a primal dinosaur, an older species that survived hidden in the mountain forests, undiscovered until now, perhaps the creature from which all herbivorous dinosaurs originate. This enormous herbivore would be an extremely difficult dinosaur to take down, and would impale intruders with its sharp nose horn if threatened. The final dinosaur available to unlock at master rank is very similar to Mantelodon, the original reconstruction of Megalosaurus. Since Megalosaurus is, like Iguanodon, a completely different dinosaur, I thought that Megasaurus might be a more fitting and differentiating name. Or perhaps Bucklandosaurus, after William Buckland. Which name do you guys think it should be? Megasaurus, Bucklandosaurus, or do you have a better name for it? Let me know. Like Mantelodon, Bucklandosaurus is a primal dinosaur, a holdover from a time long forgotten, surviving in the mountain forest and avoiding detection until now. This primal dinosaur may have been the beast from whom all carnivorous dinosaurs originated, and would be even more difficult to bring down than the mighty Tyrannosaurus. Another element carnivores genesis would include would be super rare albino and melanistic dinosaurs. Thanks to thriving dinosaur populations and Dino Hunt Corp's stellar conservation efforts, these unique creatures would not require a license to harvest, but they would be extremely rare and make a nice addition to the trophy room. The next loadout section would be the Weapons Locker, where you can choose and customize your weapons. From this menu, you can choose which type of weapon you want to use. Clicking on the type will bring up your choices. And then you can see the weapon, its rank, its cost to purchase, and weapon skin, which is customizable. Weapon skins are unlocked through card packs or buying with in-game score. The first weapon available is the Dino Hunt Corp Safari Rifle. This is a very basic rifle for beginners. It costs nothing, and its ammunition is free, so you won't be stuck running out of ammo or anything. However, it's not very powerful, and you need to be pretty close for it to be effective. The next rifle available is the C1 Dino Slayer Rifle, unlocked at intermediate rank, the bolt-action rifle issued during Carnivores Reborn. This is a good all-around rifle, capable of taking down bigger dinosaurs out to about 100 meters. The next rifle available is unlocked at expert rank the Dino Hunt KT rifle, the most powerful rifle Dino Hunt Corp has to offer. This rifle will bring even the largest of dinosaurs crashing to the ground, but because of its immense power, it is considered overkill on certain species, and will result in a minor score drop if used on, say, a Coelophysis. Now onto the bows, the first of which is the two-row compound bow. The bows are the silent alternatives to firearms, and this compound bow features a 150 pound draw weight. Now because it relies on manpower to fire and thus inflict damage, it is not recommended against large, bulky, or armored dinosaurs. Like the safari rifle, this bow costs nothing and is unlocked at novice rank. The next bow available is the X-Bow, a high power crossbow, unlocked at advanced rank. Use the binoculars rangefinder to determine your target's distance, then use the crossbow scope to line up perfect shots. Because this bow uses lever-powered firing action, it provides more stopping power than the compound variant, and can bring down dinosaurs of any size. Now on to the shotguns, the first of which is the Dino Hunt OU shotgun. This is a reliable over-under shotgun that provides good stopping power at close range but is not strong enough to be a T-Rex stopping powerhouse. Like the other novice rank weapons, this shotgun is free and has free ammunition. The next shotgun is the Dino Hunt Pump Shotgun, a classic gun debuted in the C2 era, unlockable at intermediate rank. You know how this shotgun works, you either love it or hate it. The final shotgun unlocked at advanced rank is the Dino Hunt Double Barreled Shotgun, the just as powerful cousin to the pump variant, capable of firing off two shots almost simultaneously. The next group of weapons is the sidearms, smaller backup weapons for emergencies. The first, available at intermediate rank, is the classic 9mm pistol, 
introduced in the C2 era and capable of bringing down small to medium sized dinosaurs with relative ease. The final sidearm and final weapon available at advanced rank is the Dino Hunt Revolver, a powerful handgun capable of easily bringing down elephants on Earth. This firearm was introduced during the more recent era and works well as a quick draw self-defense weapon. The next and final option from the hunt menu would be selecting your equipment. From here you can check all of the equipment, its rank, its cost to equip or purchase it, and from here you can also manage your ammunition for each of your weapons. The first equipment option is the tranquilizer rifle. Now tranquilizing dinosaurs is, of course, the humane alternative to killing them and helps separate the carnivores games from the other dinosaur shooters like the Hunter Primal or Dino Hunter Deadly Shores. Using tranquilizers has never really been that big of a difference in gameplay aside from the added 25% boost to your score. But it's always been kind of weird how you can tranquilize something by shooting it with a crossbow or a double barreled shotgun. Carnivores Reborn tried to explain this away by saying that you use tranquilizing bullets, but that's really dumb. So in Carnivores Genesis, the Trank Rifle would be a completely separate weapon. You wouldn't have to buy ammo, it's always supplied, and double ammo does work in conjunction with it. And you don't get the 25% boost because you are doing the humane thing. You get the 25% boost to your score because you just went up against a T-Rex with basically an air rifle. If you actually make it back from that, good job, you deserve that 25% boost. The tranquilizer rifle is free and can be used at any rank. The next piece of equipment will be the Pathfinder, a device that highlights the dinosaur's footprints for easier tracking. White footprints mean you are tracking a healthy dinosaur. Red footprints mean you are tracking a wounded creature. The Pathfinder costs 15 points and can be used freely at novice rank. Using it on any higher ranks will result in a lower score. The next bit of equipment is the Dinosaur Call. The Dinosaur Call is iconic to the Carnivore series. You unleash the roar of a dinosaur and wait for a response. It's a cool take on the whole deer call concept. I like the Dinosaur Decoy concept from Reborn, where the call pinpoints a dinosaur on the map and has a cooldown so you can't spam it. The call will cost 20 points and can be used at any rank. The next piece of equipment is Camouflage, the special suit that helps you blend in with your environment. Camouflage will be unlocked at intermediate rank, costs 25 points, and will knock off 15% of your total score if you use it. The next bit of equipment would be Cover Scent, which decreases your human odor and makes it harder for dinosaurs to smell you. Like Camouflage, Cover Scent is unlocked at intermediate rank, costs 25 points, and knocks off 25% of your total score. The next piece of equipment is the ever-popular Radar, a device that uses GPS signaling and motion trackers to locate dinosaurs and display them on your map. Instead of showing every dinosaur on the entire map like the original games, the Radar in Carnivore's Genesis would show dinosaurs within 300 meters of you, displayed as dots on your map. Now, Radar is unlocked at novice rank and costs 30 points to use, but because it's a much more popular and more overpowered piece of equipment, Radar knocks off no score at novice rank, 30% of your score at intermediate rank, 60% at advanced rank, 90% at expert rank, and 99% of your score at master rank. Come on, if you're a master hunter, you don't need to be using Radar. The next bit of equipment unlocked at advanced rank would be double ammo, one of the most useful perks that doubles your ammunition count. Now because ammunition is bought separately in Carnivore's Genesis, double ammo would act like a perk in conjunction with the ammo you've bought. If you've bought 15 bullets, then double ammo makes it 30 bullets, essentially doubling your ammo count for only 30 points. The next piece of equipment is a no glare, no fog, high zoom hunting scope for any dino hunt issue rifle. Primal Prey took this route by making the sniper scope separate from the guns, which lets you attach it to whichever gun you have, and I like that idea. It lets you make whichever rifle you have the sniper rifle. This scope would cost 75 points and be unlocked at advanced rank. The next bit of equipment is a supply drop, the equivalent of the supply ship from the older games. In Genesis, you can call in a mini supply drone once per buy, which can replenish your ammunition in every weapon. This would be unlocked at expert rank and cost 100 credits per use. The final piece of equipment isn't exactly equipment. It's a little dinosaur. For 500 points at expert rank, you can purchase your own Dino Hunt bred Eodromius to aid you in hunting expeditions. This little dinosaur allows you to carry extra ammunition in its fang and claw proof vest and helps mask your scent with its own. 
You can send out your Eodromius to scout ahead, distract carnivores or flush out herbivores, and of course, you can pet him too. So now that we've covered all of the options from the hunt menu, let's jump back to the main menu and take the next option, co-op hunting mode. Now I've never been just the biggest fan of cooperative hunting in games, but I know tons of people requested it for Carnivores Reborn, so the appeal is there. However, I think if co-op hunting was added to Carnivores Genesis, it would need to be approached in a different way, just so it wouldn't be everybody picking the most powerful rifle and mowing down everything in sight. I propose that co-op hunting be something called Field Guide Mode, inspired by real-life big game safaris where the hunter relies on his hunting guide in foreign areas. It would be two-man co-op, with one player playing as the wealthy hunter, and the other as a Dino Hunt Corp field guide. The hunter would be carrying weapons only, whatever main weapon he chooses and a sidearm, while the guide would have all the equipment, the radar, the calls, the rangefinder, access to the trophy ship, etc. This way, players have to work together and coordinate to bring down dinosaurs. I think it would be a fun experience for Carnivore's players, and it would help further separate Carnivore's from games like The Hunter Primal. Leaderboards would be where you could check your scores and trophies against other players. Pretty straightforward. Now for the trophy room. I want the trophy room to be completely customizable, with players able to choose the layout, music or sounds that play, the time of day you visit, and what type of information you want on the kiosk. Maybe you want the trophy room set up like Carnivores Reborn, or like the classic C2 setup, or maybe you want it Primal Prey style with little exhibits for the mounts. Perhaps you want the traditional ambient wind howls to play when you enter, or the Reborn trophy room theme, or the Ice Age theme, or maybe you just want complete silence, you get to pick. Maybe you want the sky to be at day, or at dusk, or at night if you're really weird. And maybe you don't want a cluttered trophy kiosk, just pick the info you want. I think adding a completely customizable trophy room would be one more way to keep players invested in the game. Of course, options let you customize the game settings, for if your PC is pretty garbage like mine, you have to run everything on low, credits do the obvious, and exit quits the game. There you go, Carnivore's Genesis in a nutshell. With all of that said, I don't necessarily want to see a game like this happen anytime soon. The Carnivores franchise doesn't have the best track record for released games, and even though Cityscape kind of stands on its own as this small, shallow, self-contained disaster, the last three official Carnivores releases have all felt like hollow, incomplete games, like unused extra limbs just hanging off the main body of the Carnivore series. Carnivores Reborn just came out, and it's not a great game, nor is it a complete game, but I really think that with some proper love and care, it could be something fantastic. The concept is already there and the groundwork laid. The maps and dinosaur models are gorgeous, the guns work, the whole system is there. Just add more maps, day and nighttime hunting, more dinosaurs, more weapons, fix the problems it has. With the right people, Carnivores Reborn can become what we were all hoping it would become by last summer. I don't want to see it turn into another incomplete game that just hangs around with the Carnivore's IP attached to it, while the current owners of the franchise keep pumping out shallow half-games that never get finished. In fact, I was really worried they were going to release a Carnivore's Reborn 2 that just had Allosaurus, Velociraptor, Spinosaurus, and Pachycephalosaurus. Like, hold on a second, what about the first one? I don't want to have to boot up two games just to get the same end result that I should have in one game. Just make one complete cohesive, in-depth Carnivores game. And right now, I want to see that happen to Carnivores Reborn. Fix it up, make it what we all want it to be, then, later on, maybe 10 or 15 years down the future, you can make another new one, like Carnivores Genesis. So there you go, guys. Sorry about the little rant at the end, but those are my thoughts on what I want to see in my perfect Carnivores game. Now, I've been brainstorming this idea for quite some time now, and it feels pretty good to get all of it out there. So what do you guys think of these ideas? Anything you like or want to change? What is your idea of a perfect Carnivores game? Let me know in the comments section. I am always eager to see your ideas. And of course, thanks as always for watching, guys. All of the support and views and likes still blows me away. That Indominus Rex showcase I've put up had over 500 views in less than a day. That is crazy. As long as you guys keep watching this stuff, I'll keep making it. Thanks again for watching guys and I will see you all next time.